Ahoy all, welcome back to another edition with 789Mom, and I'm sure our stuntman is around here somewhere, Jack Sack, I'm sure he'll pop out some at some point. But anyway, we are coming with you to you today with a video, a tutorial video on a, and I've done forgot already, can you say that, what it is again? It is a market for a very small village, and we're going to place the scene in mountains. All right, very good. Let's walk along. I shall follow. <laughs> All right, sounds good. On some signs here. All right. Market setting, very good. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Yep. <laughs> nice bridge oh, look, area. Oh, what a nifty place. Oh, look. What a nifty place to build. <laughs> yeah, let's just build it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. Um, so... We're going to do a market today. Does that sound good with you, lady? Sounds great. All right. So I already started um, basically filling in the um, area where I'm going to build um, with the path design that I use. It's uh, planks, cobblestone, double slab, gravel, and dirt if you want. You can take out the dirt because sometimes it turns to grass, but that's up to you. It's very nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. All right. All right, so let us start with uh, a stall. So markets usually have pretty much a lot of stalls. If you would agree, can agree, can disagree, it's up to you. I think they have a lot of stalls. I like stalls. Me too. Um, so when I'm doing a stall... I usually do the same style of stall for every stall, but with different colors. And what I mean is different wool patterns on the color scheme of the um, stall for the roof um, when you're making it. And a lot of people have their different ways of making uh, their roofs, and I like to make mine pretty tall. I think tents are pretty tall, so I make my roofs quite tall as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pattern of every other, and it's going to be five long across um, for the stall itself, make a nice even pattern. And then after that, I go two up, two down, and then one out again. See that I did right there. Then copy the same pattern on the back, and basically repeat. This will be for every stall that we do here in the... Uh, Market. I'm helping. <laughs> See that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and stall, stall designs can be as big as you want. I like to do, because it's a little town, we're just going to do little stalls. Um, so they aren't very big. You can always do bigger stalls and stuff. You basically want to look at your base and strate strategically place stalls where they would make sense to be. I'm going to put another one right next to the saw that we just did. Basically do the same pattern, but with a different color. And I think I'm going to use blue. Do you always stick with the color and then the white? Or do you know yep. what I'm saying? Like, it's always going to be white and a color, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the reason I do that is just a common theme every tent. I mean, you can obviously do different colors. I just like the white because it contrasts as on track contrasts every color my eyes white goes good with everything basically yeah i'm just doing the same roof design as the last one like so pretty simple it's a very simple design for a nice get the reason i do high um roofs is usually markets are hard to spot in a city because a lot of them are very small tents, huh. and this can really bring out where your market is it can very you can very very easily find it um like if you're looking at a dynamic map or you know something like that where you can actually see the market um from it the dynamic map or even if you're walking around the town you just see this you know, these bright tents yeah everywhere so if somebody's selling <clears throat> goods and stuff on... Yep. 
Oh, that looks good. I'm going to walk through here. You put some fences up there. That looks good. Yep, and I just put uh, fences for texture, basically. Yep. Always add texture. Um, Whenever you have a wall, you always want to add something to it, because if it's too plain, then it's not good enough. My eyes. Trap doors, buttons, you know, schmear. Fence posts help, too. Depending on what kind of style of house you're doing. Oh, that one's too short. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. His excellent, his it's Jack's excellent potatoes. He's already claimed excellent. one of the yeah. He's already claimed one of the stalls as his own. He's selling potatoes, but they're are rotten. Are you are you selling? They're my, rotten. <laughs> <laughs> he's selling my hot potatoes that I gave to him. A it while was back. So... I mean, a while back. I'm guessing they're rotten. Yeah, they're rotten. I'm not shopping there. I'm gonna have to wait and go to a different <laughs> market. <laughs> Well, you know, they're excellent. <laughs> excellent. Excellent, sorry. E X E L E N T. Excellent. <laughs> Look, I'm giving good. him a complex. He's going to write something else. <laughs> yeah, these definitely stand out. I like I like the uh the style of these stalls. Yeah. Um yeah, I discovered this when I was doing some other designs for a market. I always look at other people's designs and stuff, but I wanted something to really stand out and be big and bold, like yeah. a market should be. But you also want it to be very crowded and very compact. And we'll do that with um, the tricks of different blocks, making it seem very cramped and very, um, you know, marketish, very busy all the time. Mm-hmm. When you want something to feel, you know, very busy or very crowded, you always add more blocks. Okay. Like if you're, it's like if you're going to do, let's say something is destroyed, right? Like a fallen over pillar. The more blocks you add, the better it will look as of, um, it looks like it's been here a while, you know, but I've used it, it's been under attack, stuff like that. I don't know how to descri describe it other than showing, <laughs> which no, I which looks, I will do. Yeah, looks good. And we'll do some other decoration around, like we'll add some big trees. I'll show a cool trick, so you don't have to sit there forever with bone meal and picking down the tree and all that kind of stuff. Jack actually showed me that trick; it was pretty cool. Awesome. Half slab stuff. I always like to recognize people that give me options and videos. Again, I'm just adding fence posts um, where they should be. Yep. And like I said, this is a very small market, so there's not going to be many stalls, actually. I think this might be the last stall. Um, and then we'll add some other stuff to it as well. It's nice. All right. So there's your basic cells. You can always add more with different colors. You can always put them in different arrangements. I'm going to put it this way so I can put something in the middle and then something at the end here as well. And so at the end, I'm actually going to do a stage. And the reason I'm going to do a stage is if you ever look history, a lot of markets would have stages in the area playing music all the time. Um, it's just one of those little things that can make your market seem a lot better and a lot more, um, in depth yeah. with the surrounding area. And I'm just lining it up basically with bridge as you come in. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the bridge, lining up the stairs with how many blocks I'm doing on each side of those two blocks in the center, like so. And then I'm just rounding it off at the end, and then I'm just going to go off at the uh, very back, like so. Okay. And filling it in. And I'm using oak, but you can use a different kind of wood if you like. And how wide is that again? Let's see, it's one... About six, I believe. Okay. Centered it with the stairs, so it would look nice when you walked in. Right, right. the stage, and you saw the 
stuff. <clears throat> and then for the stage, I'm just going to add some fences on the back, like uh -huh. so. Some fences here as well, just so that the performers can't fall off on the back. In the corner here, I'm just going to add fences like this. And I'm going to make it a closed stage. Um, you can make it an open stage if you want. It's a little bit easier, but I'm going to make it closed since all my stalls are pretty much big. Yeah, might as well make it closed anyway. So I'm going to just use white wool for this. And I'm basically going to do a weird pattern, but it's going to look nice in the end. Basically a one and then a two and a two. If you come to the side later, you can see it a lot better. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Checking it out from the side here. And this way you can close up your stage and it looks a little bit nicer. <laughs> On the, uh, you look at it. Yeah, that looks good. Right. So then the last thing you really need for a stage, and I don't put much um, detail into my stage. Um, I just like to leave it blank, but whenever someone comes in, you can always add this little trick that I put into one of the towns that I did a couple of whiles ago. What I did was I took a chest, I took a jukebox, and um, in the chest I put all the CDs, a jukebox right next to it. And this way, when you, you can play music, right? but you can also hide it with uh, trapdoors. So, you know, it seems like it's not there until so you find it. Yeah, <laughs> that looks great. Oops. Yep. All right. Let's do a little decoration around the market, the very small market. All right. Um, right. I'm going to do big trees of the lighting pattern that I'm going to do um, as we get the trees up. And one really cool way that you can make big trees is by using half slabs. It forces the bone meal and the oak sapling to basically make a big tree. Re and the way you do it is, um, wherever you're going to put your sapling, you want to put down double slab like this. And then it's one, one more, I believe. Should be good to go. The one lower, Jack. Is that wrong? I think that's right. I haven't used it in a while. So basically you just keep going with the bone meal until bam you get a big tree. So explain like how tree. why why do the slabs again? So you force bone meal because without the bone meal um without the half slabs. Right. Come over here, lady. Okay. Using an oak using an oak sapling, it just makes a normal tree. Right, okay. Um, using the half slabs, using the half slabs will um, force it to make a big tree. Like this one. So you're not That's awesome. There forever um, using the bone meal. Yeah. Jack, he said again, Jack showed me that. So I'm just going to do a couple more here from the um, area, like so. Do one more over here as well. And this will kind of enclose your market as well. Make it look a little bit nicer. Um, the trees adds a little bit of nature, I guess. And then so for the hanging lights, um, I'm actually going to use a rope style. And what I mean by rope style is I'm going to take the trees, basically connect them with fences. Um, like so. Over the um yeah market uh jack was the <laughs> all right so let's see here make this better we'll raise this a little bit to make it look like a actual rope kind of hanging i know i did it a little bit tricky doing the like side rope but makes it look cool and then I'll go one down on, or two down on the ropes um, just to give them a different depth to how far they go down and put some glowstone. Then you have hanging lights. That looks fantastic, actually. That is an awesome little 
feature. I've never yep. seen that, then, honestly. The trap door is all around. Get a little, little bit nicer than that. It doesn't affect the lighting at all. It makes it look nicer. And there you go, some hanging lamps. Yeah, that looks really, really good. I like that. Yep. And then you can do the typical hanging down lamp on a tree, which I'll do in the other two trees. We just have a lamp basically hanging down from the tree on some rope. To give some nice light and features other than torches. Yeah, I we hate to see to... when torches are ever used. <laughs> Everywhere, man. It's I know. Not good. I know. I don't. I don't personally <laughs> care for it. Yeah. All right. For this middle part, since it's a little bare, I am going to add, um, basically a little garden. I think I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. What do you think, lady? Garden sound good? Yeah, to you? I was gonna say a garden or some sort of water area. I don't know. Yeah. We'll do a garden. That's fine. I'm only going to do it halfway so we have a little bit of area for seats for the stage. In case people want to sit down and watch. Like I said, again, this is going to be a very crowded area. So you really want to compact everything into this small place. And it'll make it look busier and it'll actually look nicer if you look at it this way. I am just going to do a garden with some grass, basically. And uh, put some seats around it some benches, and last time I said I'd do uh, jungle wood for all my furniture, which is true to anything I do. And I'm just going to replace the half slabs with uh, the uh, seats instead. So. That looks really good. Yeah. Something so simple can make a, a world of difference in a build. Yep, and then on these end ones, I'm just going to add trap doors, um, just so it doesn't look like they're hanging off. You don't really have to add them, because you have the stone, or the half slabs on the side ones. But on the end ones, I think that'll look a lot better. And, uh, let's do some seating for this stage, in case people want to sit down. Oop, that's brick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not a like you. <laughs> that's not jungle wood. Uh, that's not jungle wood. <laughs> there we go. That looks better. All right. And then I'm just going to add, again, trap doors to this because it's an outdoor area. So now the stage has a bit of a place where people can sit down and watch performers and stuff. Hey, you never know. They might hold auctions here and everything else. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. <laughs> While I was busy, um, Jack was basically filling up the stalls. Um, one way that you can really make a stall look nice, um, if, uh, if you're doing, let's say you're doing, like, um, a bookshop. Obviously, Jack here, he put bookshelves in the back to make it look like it's a bookshop. Over here, he uh, did potatoes, so he has furnaces and some chests to hold the potatoes. Um, armor, he has an anvil over here. He has some chests to hold the armor. <laughs> I love his excellent. Song. excellent, excellent, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Um, one other thing that you can do is watermelons and pumpkins everywhere. Even if you don't have uh, shops for them, they just make the market look more full. So right where you're standing, lady, I'm just going to put the melons down. You get look like they're just stacked there in case someone wants to buy them. And on the opposite side, I'm just going to put some pumpkins. This will bring out the color scheme and it'll make it look like pumpkins and watermelons are kind of for sale. Even though none of your um, dolls have them for sale if you choose to. You just put them around in different kind of stacks. Like so. That looks good. The last thing, or another thing that we're going to do, probably not the last thing. I always add more. Um, chest pistons are what I use usually to fill in places where storage is needed. The reason I use pistons is, one, because of texture packs. 
Um, a lot of people use vanilla. Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. Um, a lot of people use vanilla, a lot of people use different texture packs, but usually people can tell out that crates, or sorry, uh, pistons look a lot like crates. Um, so what I do is do some pistons, and then I do some chests, um, just like all around piston area of the piston pistons being laid down. And it looks at, makes it look kind of like a storage type place where the shopkeeper is storing stuff. These are some great tips. Then, <laughs> they are. <laughs> and then you, you just put them wherever it looks like it, they need it, just all around. Um, the stacks, when you're doing your stacks, I know it can be hard trying to figure out how to do stacks. Um, always keep the pistons face up is one thing. I never put a piston sideways. Um, if it's for a storage purpose, if it's for another purpose, it can be sideways. But... um. Never do that. Always use single chests and try to double chest when you can, but single chests are the best, I think. Double chests can be good, but um I, I like the single chest or with the crate or the pistons. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I definitely like the uh single chest better, but like you said, if you're only putting one or two of the double chests and mostly the single chests, then I think it'll work just fine. Yeah, yep. It's just fine. And when you're trying, and when you're doing the stacks, uh, one of the most common ones is the, you know, the left or the, you know, the three on the bottom and then the one on top like that. You know, yeah. Add something to it or do a different stack basically. Just make it look like it's randomly placed. Don't make it look the same all around the everywhere. Jack made the fancy trees. <laughs> he put the wood on the bottom. Yeah, that looks good. Gives it, it gives it a thick fuller. base. Yeah. Yep. You can always do that too. Just uh, make the trunks a little bit bigger by adding wood everywhere that you can. Makes it look nice. There you go. That's basically a market. I mean. That looks good. Much more that you can add. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's just it's fantastic looking. I know it's a uh, pretty small for a market, but this is a small town, so. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to uh, like and favorite and share this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, be sure to do so. We'll be doing more of these videos. And if you have any suggestions at all, something you might want to see seven, eight, nine mom build, <laughs> and he's shaking his head yes. Uh, please leave a comment down below. Alright guys, that's it for now. We'll see you guys in a later video. Bye. Yeah. Bye.